Yo, yo, what's good, y'all? This is MRG. I'm Sweez. And together we are Star 6-7. And this is our intro too. I started doing it individually at first when I tore my ACL playing football. I was a big athlete, baseball, football player. Um, yeah, I tore my ACL. Sports was like my life low key. Like not being able to do that for a year. Hip hop was just always around. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like I'm very competitive. Let me channel this competitiveness into music. My story is different. Like I was in a digital music class in high school and the teacher did not rock with me at all. So he eventually like basically forced me out of the class. I was taking pottery for like two years. <laughs> Found like eight years later, I heard MRG was doing his thing and I was I wanted to help in any way. So I really just wanted to be a writer. I went to the studio for the first time. We ended up making our first song called Broken Hearted. And then from there I kept writing. Turns out now we got like a bunch of joints out. It's like, all right, we might as well be, be a, a legitimate band at this point. So now we, we start 6-7. Oh man, what, I feel cliche, cheesy, but life, I treat music like a diary. It's literally a reflection of what I'm going through. It's beauty and the struggle. I feel like me personally, I love listening to like kind of, you know, music about overcoming hardship and situations. and. We dealt with a lot of that, and it's reflected in the music, you know? My love of music really came from my parents. Like, they took me to concerts at a very young age. My first concert ever was actually, I saw Kiss. Like, I'm a hard, uh, heavy metalhead, come from my dad. So I saw Kiss and Aerosmith at Jones Beach when I was like 10 years old. So now it's just all about the grind, just getting in the studio and just making random stuff out of nowhere and just keeping in the stash because I know one day that's an asset. For us, like when we make music, I feel like we don't sound like anybody else. So I'll probably tell everyone to listen to End of the Summer first because that song is just kind of mind blowing. I think Plastic City, even though I slept on it, because he did the hook and I was like, I don't know if I'm feeling this. And then I just like bumped it in the whip. My city is magic. I got a bad bitch made of plastic and she might be moving on cause my mood is erratic. I was like, oh, I'm tripping. Like, this the, shit the whip crazy. test is very important. Sober enough. Mm -hmm. Even though that's not out yet because um, that's a song that we kind of like, that's kind of what made us a duel. Shit, we just did it. I was literally on the bus on the way to his crib. And I texted him a line, he texted me a line, we got in a stool and we knocked the song out. I was like, oh shit, this shit crazy. Definitely as an artist, uh, you know, obviously we want to feed our family with it. I mean, we have very ambitious goals. I want to win a Grammy. I definitely see us winning a Grammy. Um, Madison Square Garden, that's, that's a goal for sure. And we want to become mainstream instead of like mainstream becoming us. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like a lot of that is going to come with, and one of my major goals is to like really get down a, a great show. Like everywhere we right. go, a very diverse show where the audience leaves very like connected to us and our music and eventually make it to like the festival scene. Mm -hmm. And cause I love personally just going to music festivals and running around and dancing and going wild. So I, I just want to be on the other side of that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's going to be like the peak. That would be like one of the peak experiences. So I would do Gene Simmons, who's one of the like lead singers at Kiss. I feel like we could just do some some randomness together, that'd be fire. I think Kanye is just so versatile. But growing up, college dropout, Jesus Walks, graduation, yes. even 808 and Heartbreaks, I slept on that personally, but that transformed the game for everybody. Like yeah. that album might be the most influential album. I would say Trust Your Gut, and that shit never lies, for real. Trust Your Gut, um, especially in the, in the art, artistic world, like you gonna, you gonna hear a lot of voices from the outside, a lot of people telling you go in this direction, go in that direction, but at the end of the day, you got to be your own biggest fan. I would tell myself, like, you don't have to rush to, like, figure out what's going to happen because this music thing came to me naturally. Be true to yourself. Don't worry about what other people are telling you. Don't necessarily worry about what your parents are saying because they think they know what's best. But most of the time, they, they, they don't know what's happening. Like, they don't know the drive that you have or what the potential you have. They just want you to be, do the safe thing. And a lot of people end up wanting you to do the safe thing. And sometimes you got to take, take those risks and just be yourself. We just dropped our seventh song together. It was called Cry Baby. Go check that out on all streaming platforms. It's a real fun song that we uh, recorded at the beginning of, uh, of Quarantine Life. So, you know, we, we shot a little video with that, with Wasting My Twenties, Ant over here. Um, we're going to shoot Sober Enough, which is a song that brought us together. So definitely be on the lookout for that single. I just dropped a single individually, MRG, Young and Hopeless. That's official video out everywhere. Nickelodeon. Yeah, Rugrats was my favorite cartoon growing up. I need to see like a versus like this. <laughs> <laughs> we need a versus for that because when I was super younger, like I used to watch Count Chicken, Courage the Cowardly Dog, 
And then when I got a little older, I think I started rocking with Nickelodeon, like SpongeBob. I'm gonna have to go with Cartoon Network. Mm. Wow. Cartoon has some heat, but I mean, obviously, Rocket Power, SpongeBob. Rocket Power, SpongeBob. Yeah, probably Nickelodeon. Um, I just wanted to be on the opposite wild side. Wild Thornberries. Like, People slept wild on Wild Thornberries. Yeah, Wild, wild Thornberries. Thornberries is fire. My definition of a soul, I think a soul is. Uh, damn, nobody ever asked me that question before. That's deep. I don't know, man. I think our soul is kind of eternal. I think it was always there. You know, Matt is never created or destroyed, so. I'm kind of mm. just spitballing and shit, but yeah, I think I think our soul is eternal. So, uh, I feel like our soul is is our truest self, like who we would be without any limitations in our daily lives. Even though in our daily life there are limitations and yeah. things like that, but your soul is like your essence of what you aspire and you know what you will become. And then the afterlife, then there are no limitations again, and you can be your your authentic, shining self. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess your soul is you and your peers form. Yeah. pretty much. Yeah. I'm here with Star Six Seven. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, wasting my twenties for having us in. Come on, away. We just getting started. Ah, uh, let's get it.